So today I want to shine a little light on the early versions of buildings in Hogs of War and the additional features that players were able to use on the battlefield. Now you guys have heard me talk before about how the game currently has a lack of depth and detail when it comes to buildings, especially because the devs originally intended for the buildings to have some form of interior, which allowed for pigs to go inside them and attack from windows and rooftops. Uh, but nowadays the buildings are very one-dimensional. Uh, they're basically empty shells that either house like health crates or they're just part of the scenery. It's a real shame because the idea of being able to go inside buildings and use them uh, could have changed the dynamic of how the game could be played. And to me, it's something that I feel is really missing in the current version of the game. Take a map like Graveyard Shift, for instance. On the face of it, the map is very basic. There's no extra crates or health on the map. It has a small portion of water running through it and there are very simple 3D shapes that I guess you can call buildings. But now imagine that rather than simply standing on top of these objects, you could actually go inside them and shoot from within. Like how much more interesting would that make this map and just countless others that have some type of building that just doesn't really serve any purpose? And what if you could then factor in the idea of other buildings actually taking damage and changing their state depending on how damaged they are? Well, that used to be the case. The very early days of development saw buildings have three stages and they are quoted as the following. Version 1, the buildings are in very good condition, though they may have extremely light damage, such as tiles missing on the roof, a couple of bullet holes here and there, or some smashed windows. Version 2, the model should be lightly damaged with some small holes in the roof, with the walls charred and scarred. And version 3, the model is heavily damaged with no roof, big holes in one or more of the walls with extra scarring and charring. And the final version, the building is shown as nothing more than a low pile of smoldering beams or bricks. This building can no longer be repaired by an engineer and is considered destroyed. If the victory criteria of a mission asks for a building to be destroyed, this is the state it must reach. The design document continues stating that models can be retained but textures need to change in some way to show damage, either darker shaders or replaced with a more scarred texture. Extra special effects may be used on a model to show how it has sustained heavy damage, such as smoke or fire. So the devs were already looking at a system of changing the building model depending on the amount of damage that had been dealt to it. It's an awesome idea, especially when you consider how static the game currently is. When you shoot a bazooka or any form of heavy weapon, the shell explodes, the particle effect plays out, and then that's it. There's no other special effect that remains after the animation is played out. There's no extra smoke or extra fire that continues to burn or smolder. Instead, everything remains very clean. All the damage that is dealt to the modern day buildings in Hogs is done behind the scenes. So you don't actually see the overall health of the building itself. And the only point the player knows when a building is damaged is when a piece of it just kind of falls off and explodes. This method is totally fine, I'm not saying it's bad, it's just missing those extra details that the game was intending to have. Alongside the idea of buildings appearing in different states when damaged, there was also the idea of different types of buildings that offered battle advantages to the player. Starting with the farmhouse, which is described as being abandoned by their owners, these quaint single-story greystone buildings will take quite a lot of damage. They hold two pigs and provide large firing apertures compared to those found in vehicles. This building can be repaired by an engineer. Houses are similar to farmhouses, instead they are comprised of two stories and can hold three pigs, and this building can also be repaired by an engineer. Fuel and ammo dumps are a combination of oil drums and crates that are usually placed on the battlefield as a target that must be destroyed or defended. Warehouses are large flat buildings that are usually placed on the battlefield as a target that must be defended or destroyed, Two pigs can take cover inside a warehouse. Churches have the same effect and usage as a farmhouse, but are visually different. They are the tallest building in the game, so planes and zeppelins can actually crash into them if not careful. Churches can be repaired by engineers. Barbed wire is a feature that reduces the movement of troops and causes minor damage to pigs, but it can be cleared by an explosive device. Tanks and troop carriers can just roll over them, and this object cannot be repaired. Low walls, either dry stone or of a concrete variation, can provide cover for pigs. Tanks are able to roll over them, but troop transports cannot. This object can be destroyed by explosive devices and cannot be repaired. High walls, constructed by engineers or found on the battlefield, can provide further cover, but they can also be destroyed by explosives, but cannot be rolled over by tanks or troop transports. 
Trenches can provide good cover for troops, but movement in and out of them can take up valuable time and they cannot be repaired. Sandbags are objects that are similar to low walls as they provide good cover and heavy weapons pigs have the ability to place these on the battlefield. Meanwhile, bridges will usually span impassable terrain such as water or minefields. They will be of paramount strategic importance in many encounters with players attempting to blow them up, fix them or hold them at every turn. They can be repaired by engineers. And finally, barrage balloons. They may be tethered to nearby buildings or other important terrain features in order to protect them from attack from above. Any missile, projectile or plane that comes into contact with them will take damage. Balloons will be destroyed after a couple of impacts from these assets. So to summarize, there was a wide variety of building types in the early version of Hogs of War, with pretty much every asset affecting the player in some way. Gameplay involved all of these buildings in some way, shape or form, whether it be providing pigs with cover, providing extra protection through hiding inside them, or even obstructing more powerful attacks that come from the air. Every small asset like walls or bridges seem to hold some form of significance compared to today's gameplay, in that they are vital to the player's success during battle. The Engineer class seems to play a significant role in being able to maintain the upkeep of most buildings uh, as well as just using them to their advantage. I think because we've talked about unused characters before as well, we know that certain mission types like escort missions or uh, what we've discussed already in destroying certain buildings to uh, equal mission objectives, you know, they would play a huge part in how a mission would play out, whether it be escorting scientists from point A to point B. But, you know, that would include some form of building. So there's always this constant upkeep of these different kind of buildings whether it be just a simple battle or a mission objective but overall this just makes me wish that the current version of the buildings we have in the final version of the game were a bit more dynamic and were used to the same standard that they were in the early development of the game because even just being able to go inside the building and shoot from a window completely changes the way that you end up playing the game because if a pig is inside a building you then have to think about okay well how am I going to take down this building what weapons should I use how powerful are they and so your focus just changes uh, from the pig onto the building almost treating the building as if it were a vehicle in that you've got to destroy that first to then get to the pig inside it but what do you think about the early versions of buildings do you think they could have been used and do you think it would have improved the game if you were able to go inside them and use them for more of a purpose than just cover. Let me know everything you have to say in the comments below. Let's get a discussion going as we always do. And that is gonna wrap it up for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to check out my other videos. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you guys later for the next one.